Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and as you can see on the screen, it would appear that we have basically two Royals. Now, the only thing with that is these two trucks are not the same, except for they are, but they also are not. Now, the truck we're in right now is a standard Royal BM-17. The one to my right is what the modder refers to it as the Royal BM-18, which is his tweaked variant. Now, I will leave a link to this mod in the description box down below, and it's actually, we're kind of taking a trip back in time here because this truck was actually submitted way back in, I believe, May? Uh, May of this year, and so it's not a new mod by any means, but I never actually played around with it because at the time I thought the Royal, at the time I actually thought the Royal was the best truck in the game, and it was, I thought it was the most versatile, and I thought it was really one of my personal favorite trucks, and so I never actually looked into any tweaks or modifications of it. So what I'm actually going to do in this video is I'm going to fully build up this stock or sort of standard variant of the Royal and then I'm going to build up this tweaked variant and we're actually going to run them in some back-to-back -back tests and see how they do against each other because I'm really curious to see if that tweak makes it OP or if it makes it the way it should have come in the first place. So let's go ahead and throw, I don't know why we have those, uh, we have the maximum, actually no we don't have the max. Let's go ahead and make this one the S Plus with the 2700T. And Gearbox, we're going to do, probably going to do off-road in both. We're going to set these up very similarly. Raised on both. And tires-wise, I'm going to go with a 51-inch UOD2 on this variant. And then winch-wise, I'm just going to go with an advanced medium. And I am not going to bother with the spare wheel on either one because I feel like there's not really that much of a that much of an advantage to be gained from it because obviously we can just repair instantly. Wedge cap air filter. And frame add-on wise, I'm going to do the sideboard bed because I feel as though that's probably the default way that I would use this and, a, and the way a lot of people would use it. So I'm going to leave the... Uh, the Cosmetic options pretty standard not gonna do anything too crazy with that uh, I may throw a cabin protector on it because I think it looks cool and I'll throw a muzzle exhaust on it as well And MD rims 3 and we'll go with that and we'll leave actually the default paint scheme And we'll throw beans on the dash just to have them there. You know what I mean and exterior stickers eh, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I might go ahead and throw like a saber tooth on the hood, but well, that, that'll be all we'll do. I'm not going to spend too much time on the standard variant. So, obviously, one of the biggest things about the stock Royal is that you do not get a locking diff. And a lot of people say that no matter what, if the Royal had a locking diff, it would be overpowered. Period. Well, today, that's what we're actually going to find out. Is it overpowered with a locking diff? Is it not? Let's find out. So, now, the BM-18 modified version... Now, let's go ahead and put, let's see, so we have a 3000TC, which is actually really interesting, and that also gives us a, you can get an S plus rating out of the 2700T or the 3000TC, so again, we're going to be building these trucks to the maximum that they allow us to. Now, would I put this engine in the other one if it had allowed me to? Sure, but, but... This one allows me to put in a slightly bigger one, so I'm putting that one in. I'm going to do an off-road transmission in this one. You only get one suspension option with this tweaked variant, which is interesting to me. And you have 51 and 54-inch tire options. You also get a set of tires that are basically off of the YAR, which is very interesting to me. But for the purposes of this test, I'm actually going to be running a UOD2 which probably I'm going to do in the same size as well, just to keep it fairly uh, well balanced. And we'll do an advanced medium on this one as well. Engageable diff lock, and that will most likely be the game changer here. And then we're going to do a double wedge cap higher up. And then now that we've got that done, let's do a muzzle exhaust. And let's see, cabin protector, because we got one on the other one. And I'll leave the front end pretty you know, pretty visually standard, and then we will go with, let's see, hmm, 
MD Rims 1 on this one, just to kind of change it up a little bit. Standard paint scheme, and then, ah, you don't really get any interior customization on this one, which is fine. But let's go ahead and leave the garage now in this one and see how much of a difference that locking diff get, gets us. Now, it's worth noting that that locking diff is not on all the time. It's a switchable diff that is only on when you are in... Uh, when you're in low range or any of the low range gears or reverse. So let's go ahead and actually use this guy to just tell the uh, the other one to sort of come with us. Off you go. Put this thing back in back in normal normal automatic mode. We'll go ahead and make a right right here and head down towards the water. Now our first test is going to be a hill climb test and then the next one after that is going to be a mud test and then after that we'll go on to the dips test. Our standard testing routine, obviously, but we're applying it to two trucks on this one instead of just one because, again, I'm very, very curious to see that if the Royal had come with a locking diff right off the bat, would it have been this overpowered monster that we, and I will admit that, that you know, all of us, myself included, think it would be, or would it be still pretty balanced but just a little bit better than before? I don't know. We have yet to find out. So let's go ahead and try this hill now now keep in mind we do have a more powerful engine not just the locking dip but let's line up we're gonna run this in low plus diff lock engaged and up the hill we go as you can see does a really good job of climbing up the hill also does a really good job of of falling over and hopefully we'll be able to use the other one to kind of help rescue it so now this is going to be the standard royal and this obviously has just the option of standard all-wheel drive so let's get you into position low plus all-wheel drive on and take off gonna take the same route that we took in the other one and actually this one climbs just about as easily as the other one did interestingly enough oh do not do not roll over on me uh-uh no come with me yep you're coming with me easy does it thank you tc's towing at your service now before we run this next test we're gonna go ahead and do a quick repair and refuel to make sure the trucks are both ready to go obviously i'm going to also repair and refuel the other royal before we do this test and we're going to run a mud test real quick so let's go ahead and throw it in high this is the standard royal obviously with just all-wheel drive and no diff lock now the mud is going to be a very interesting comparison because i feel like the diff lock is definitely going to make a difference here and also considering the fact that we're running the same tire compound it'll be really interesting to see now the standard royal doesn't seem to have any problems at all with this mud depth but what will it do when we actually put it into some deeper, thicker mud? Still goes really well in high. Very, very, very well. Keep in mind, this is the standard truck. So that's a very, 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 very good performance out of the standard truck. Let's put it into low plus now as we go into the deeper mud and see if we can keep this sort of momentum going or if it starts to yell at us and say, ah, 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 ah that's enough. Still going pretty well, though, I've got to say. Now, it does have some spinning issues in low plus, which is to be expected. I'm not really going to give it any sort of bad mark for that. I mean, it's definitely gotten pretty slow, and it's gotten actually down to the point to where low and low plus are the same speed. And so when you bring that kind of into perspective, you're like, okay, you know, we're definitely getting to the point where this is challenging, but not necessarily getting us stuck or stranded, you know? So, once we actually get through this, gonna kind of make a mental note of how it did there, and I would like, you know, for you guys to make a mental note of that as well, so that when we bring the other truck in here, we sort of have a, a similar base to compare from. Now, this one I'm also gonna run in the shallow mud and high, but the difference is going to become when we, when we run into the other mud, and we can actually turn the diff lock on when we're in low and low plus. Now, this actually seems to be pretty similar performance in the shallow mud, so no real surprise there. But let's go ahead and dive it into the deeper mud lanes now and see how it does. Now, the other Royal did this in high with the diff lock off, so let's see. Seems to be performing actually pretty similarly to the other Royal. Pretty dang similarly. Let's go ahead and throw it in low plus and lock the diff. 
You can definitely feel how the diff lock makes things more consistent, but I don't know if I would go as far as, like, as to say that it makes it overpowered just yet. As we dive into the deeper stuff, you can see that even though the axles are all spinning at the same speed, you know, since they're locked together... Well, I take that back. Yeah, you could definitely feel that low plus is performing better with the diff lock on, so I will say that performance has improved, but I wouldn't say it's improved at such an exponential degree that it would make this thing unfair or overpowered. Now, if you put it into standard low range, obviously it doesn't really lose that much speed because you're not really going all that fast anyway, but with the lockers on, it definitely becomes more consistent. Things really do kind of come into a much more well-rounded, consistent space at that point. So I don't really think you have anything to necessarily worry about. But at the same time, you know, seeing what this thing does kind of makes me feel like they really could have added diff lock to it and it would not have been overpowered. I can think of actually quite a few trucks that have diff lock that you know, perform about the same as this tweaked Royal does that are, you know, in the stock game as it sits. So I can't really find a reason yet to support the argument of if we gave the, the Royal a diff lock, it would just be overpowered in every scenario because it doesn't necessarily feel that way yet. So now let's go ahead and try the dips obstacle. Now I could see the diff lock playing a role here, but let's go ahead and plunge ourselves in in the standard one see how it does and see if it feels like it leaves much to be desired which so far for a big truck it's doing real well you can see how the diff lock definitely would have been useful to have right there though but this thing is definitely one of those where you have to keep your momentum up and you will get some damage by doing that so there is a little bit of a damage penalty for trying to barrel through something like this with momentum but that's kind of that's kind of what you have to do when you know, you live the open diff life as this truck does in base form. But I think we will definitely be able to go with a slower, more calculated approach with the locking diffs. So it made it through fine, just with a little bit of damage. So let's go ahead and repair it before we... Oh God, that's not what I wanted to do. Let's go ahead and repair it before we shut it down. And now let's go to the BM18, the modified version. And by the way, as you can see, he's also adjusted the wheel offset for this tweaked version and it makes it look so much better so much better with the adjusted wheel offset and he didn't adjust it much just a little bit to where the tires were a little bit closer to the edge of the fender line and that gave the truck a much much better stance in my opinion so throw it in low plus this time we will engage the diff lock whoa really really started rolling it there i need to actually like take a much slower approach Come on. There we go. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There it is. Come on. Let's put it in standard low. Yeah, you could definitely get away with being a lot slower and a lot less, you know, uh, damage uh, building with this diff lock, but, you know, I, again, I can think of actually multiple trucks just offhand that perform very similarly to this, you know, this tweaked Royal that are in the base game, so I still don't think that the, well, the Royal doesn't have a diff lock because it would just make it OP, I don't think that argument holds up, I really, really don't, and I think that actually, I could definitely see them adding a diff lock to the Royal in a future update. I would actually really like to see them do that because I think that it, you know, it adds a little bit of extra capability to the truck, but I definitely don't think it makes it overpowered. Now, if you have a differing opinion on that, if you feel like it does make it overpowered, let me know in the comment section below. Also, you know, let me know if you would like to see a diff lock upgrade come to the Royal in the base game because what's interesting about the Royal as well is it's gone relatively untouched by mod creators ever since, you know, these two tweaks came out, and I think there was one more, but I just kind of chose not to use it. Um, there was like two or three tweaks, but this was the one that kind of seemed like the highest quality to me. But with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure you stick around, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.